stromboli today. Um, because the cook time on the stromboli takes maybe like 15 minutes, we're gonna um, jump right into making it. And then what we'll do is we'll tell a little bit more of the origin of this recipe that we're making and um, answer your questions, talk dough, talk whatever you'd like to talk about. Um, but first we're gonna make. So this is gonna be something a little bit different. You ready to rock and roll? Okay, um, you're gonna hold it this way, right? Yeah. Awesome. So we're gonna jump right into it. I'm gonna get into the ingredients first. I'm gonna put this down here so you guys can see it. Um, of course, pizza dough goes inside. We're using this old style mustard. It's grains with um, mustard seed. It's really beautiful. Green peppers. What are these, Chef? Poblanos? Yep. So they're, we, we're looking for jalapenos. They didn't have any. So these are not as spicy, but they're still green and they're beautiful. A little red onion. And we're using some fresh mozzarella cheese. And now for the main ingredient, some country ham and some sopressata. All right, so we're gonna put this together first. And then what we're gonna do is throw it into the oven, um, bake it, and then we'll get into the kind of the, the story behind the stromboli and answer any questions that you guys have, okay? Um, so, all right, first the dough. Uh, always, like my pizza, always flour up in front of me. Like flour up a little workstation. Dough is awesome. This is like a five day dough. Finger up my, flour up my fingertips. Oil side goes right down. And now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna um, just pick it up. And then just, and that just helps this thing so it doesn't stick. Now for pizza dough, you get a lot of bubbles. For stromboli, I'm gonna kind of pound on those bubbles a little bit, just so um, it doesn't blow up too much. I'm gonna basically kind of press this out and I'm pushing all the bubbles out. You guys can see that. I'm gonna press all those bubbles out. Pick it up so it doesn't get stuck. I'm kind of forming this into a rectangle you guys can see, right? And if it gets sticky at all, just put a little more flour on your fingers. And you can see it's starting to form like a rectangle. I might pick it up a little bit here, just give it a little stretch. And it's getting there, it's probably about six by 10 right now. I'm just about the size I want it to be. And again, I'm gonna really work hard on knocking those bubbles out of the dough, otherwise, because you don't really need them in the stromboli. We're making like, a, we're gonna roll this up like a cigar in a few minutes. So you can see it's got a pretty nice shape to it now, you see? All right. Next. So I'm gonna, can you guys see this okay, Chef? Was that good, is that a good angle? Great. Oh, perfect, okay, good. So now what I'm gonna do is grab this mustard. And you guys, this is pretty available anywhere. I'm gonna paint the entire um, dough, the mustard. I go heavy. This has got a nice kick to it. Nice grains, you can see it. Gives it a lot of bite. Awesomeness. Smell it, right? Smell that? Not great. All right, so mustard. That aside, and now I'm gonna do the country ham. And I, this is like three or four slices of ham. Your favorite ham works. I'm trying to make this as flat as possible because I'm gonna be rolling it shortly. And I go kind of like I do with my pizza, I go to the edges so I don't go over the edge. And this is about four pieces of ham. The soppressata goes on next. And there really is no particular order. We just find this kind of nice, this layers it nicely. Um, and now what I'll do is I'll look for my peppers, right? I should have sliced these a little thinner, but that's okay. It's gonna work beautifully. 
I'm not counting. I'm not adding my ingredients. I'm just kind of feeling it. I don't want to, I guess I can stuff this a little bit if I'd like to, right? Um, red onion, thin slices of onion, which is nice. Look pretty, it smells nice. All right, and now I'm gonna take some, and you can, the cheese, I have some fresh mozzarella here. I'm gonna break this off by hand. And then what I'll do is um, we're gonna roll it up. So I break these into smaller chunks. Again, cause I'm gonna be rolling this up. It just makes the rolling process a little bit easier. You guys like, I know you like a lot of cheese. Who doesn't, right? And if you want to do a little salt and pepper in there, feel free. I think it's got plenty of salt already because of all the, the, the meats that we put inside. All right. So that's um, the Stromboli. <clears throat> Next one I'm gonna do is roll this up like a cigar. And the best, I'm gonna change the view here. Of it. It makes sense to change the view, or is this good like the way it is, Chef? I think it's good the way it's it is? pretty good. You got the whole thing in there. Okay. Um, the side here, Coop, put like down low, maybe. I'm going to roll this like a cigar. Even lower. Like, like, yeah, yeah. Um, I'm going to bring it, and then I'm, I'm basically just grabbing the edges and just folding it over, okay? And now what I'm going to do is just roll it like a cigar. If something falls out, that's okay. I kind of make sure I, I'm tucking the food in as I go. I'm not rolling it super tight, but I'm, I've got a lot of rolls there. And then I've got to this point where um, the dough is at the end, and I'm literally just going to pinch it together, pinch those edges together to close it up. And that's kind of it, okay? So now, because the I've got my baking steel in the oven, okay, I got two, two steels. Um, my oven's been preheating at 450. But because the steel and the stromboli might get a little messy, this is the time I'm gonna use parchment paper. I'm not gonna use the broiler with the stromboli. I'm gonna rip a piece of parchment off. I'm gonna, off. I'm gonna place it, and now you can get back to this screen here. Place the stromboli on the parchment. You guys see this here? And there's a couple of rules of thumb here. Some might poke some holes, slots, to let this thing steam and breathe. Um, I'm just gonna put, I actually like to keep it um, closed. I don't let it breathe, but feel free to. And I just put a little oil on top. And what the oil is gonna do is it's gonna help it brown and give it a little bit of a crispness to it. This is an olive oil, um, again, really light, and I'm just kind of painting it on. And because I have the parchment paper, launching this is gonna be a piece of cake. Oh, this side now. Launching this is gonna be a piece of cake. Uh, again, this, this slides right on top of my um, peel. And now I go into the oven. Watch how easy this is. Yes, I'm gonna open this up a little bit. I'm gonna go onto my bottom seal just for fun. Just slide it in. Close her up. I'll put my timer on. That's awesome. Doesn't work. My timer's not working. It's on memory or something. We get, we get the timer on the, on the um, like scale for me. My timer's messed up. I don't know what happened. Oh, this one. 007. 007. Oh, yeah, look at that. Okay, so now 15 minutes. I might do, yeah, 15 minutes. I'll do, I'll do 14 minutes. It's so fun. I've already wasted a minute doing this. You guys see that? Probably not. But all right. Anyway, I got the timer on. We get a bench to perform in the door, please. I got the timer on for about 15 minutes. That's gonna be enough time for this thing to brown, 
heat up inside and steam it. Um, if you wanted to stand over there for a couple of minutes, take a couple of shots of this, maybe you'll get, you'll get some nuggets out of it. Just start over again. Um, so I will record it too. So um, I'm gonna let, let that steam inside of the um, stromboli and the meat and the cheese is gonna melt. It all kind of gels together. And then when we slice that thing open, it's just really beautiful. Uh, the origins of this stromboli is from um, this great chef out in Portland. Her name is Jen Lewis. Um, she was top, you know, uh, food and wine chef, top chef food and wine. Was it like 2012 maybe? Chef, sound about right. And yeah. she had her husband had contact me at the time back when we started out and said, hey what's this baking steel thing? I'd love to try it. And I said, sure, Jen, you can totally try this. But in return, I'd love to have a recipe or two. And she gave us the stromboli recipe that we literally serve in our um, pizza classes every single week. And it's just amazing. I, I really encourage you guys to make it. Um, feel free to kind of um, make it audible for your favorite you know, Italian meats inside or cheeses. Uh, but the basic principle of it is, it's, you know, it's not a calzone, whereas calzone's more of a red sauce and cheese um, and a fold. Stromboli is like rolled like a cigar, so you're getting a little bit more dough um, per bite. And it's really just amazing. And also make sure you're using the parchment paper like we talked about. But the end result is just cool. And it's just, we've not had, uh, people just seem to really love it. Which is a, probably a good segue into questions. Does anybody have any questions on what we just, what just happened? Let us know. How much, how much dough per stromboli? That's okay, great question. So literally that was the size of our pizza dough. That was a 240 gram deli, eight ounces. Um, and it's either pizza dough or stromboli. I don't really don't make anything specifically for the stromboli. It's literally just the dough. And we, again, I stretched it out almost like a pizza, but it was just rectangle versus, um, you know, round. That's the main difference. Is mustard a standard thing in stromboli? Traditionally, I don't know. I think traditionally stromboli comes from like strombole. E in um, Italy, I just made that up. <laughs> um, I think it comes from Stromboli, Italy, and I just think it means Italian meats. If anybody knows that answer, please feel free to jump in. I just made that up. <laughs> Could you use roasted bell peppers? 100%. Um, yes, we, in fact, we've done that, right? Haven't we done that? Um, we've done it, you know, sometimes we just do whatever's in the fridge. Um, we'll just make a stromboli out of it. So it's just, a, what, it's again, different technique. What was the oven temp? Uh, the oven temp is at 450. 450, I've got parchment paper in there, so I don't want to use the broiler. Uh, we've done that before, trust us. It'll, it'll, um, it'll burn that paper and set it on fire. Can you freeze the dough? Mm. That's a great question. Um, so the pizza dough, if you're gonna freeze your dough, my only recommendation is to make your dough balls after say a one or two day ferment, ball it up and then freeze it right away. You do not want it to overproof first and then freeze it. If it does overproof, take it out of the container and make a dough ball again and you know, knock the gases out of it. Ball it up again and then freeze. That makes the most sense for that. Can you use a rolling pin for the dough? Yes, another great question. Loaded with great questions today. Um, yeah, with Stromboli, we don't really mind, um, we're really getting rid of the air bubbles inside. Um, so rolling pin is fine. It's gonna, be, it's gonna make it actually nice and flat and crispy. Is that working now? You wanna take a look inside the oven? Yeah. Let's take a let's take a peek inside the oven. It's been only about you know six, maybe five or six minutes. On this side. Um, you can see, not much going on there yet. It's just kind of cooking away, doing its thing. I don't even really need to rotate it yet. It's so early in the so early in the process. 
um, like maybe six minutes in. So it needs another, it says eight minutes to go and it'll cook awesome. These things are super easy to make. And what I love about the Stromboli is that um, we do it for pizza classes because as people are coming into class, usually there's 10 people inside. What we do is um, we have the Stromboli ready and then when the guests arrive, we're pouring them a glass of wine and we can have it pre-made. All we do is, you know, Chef Craig usually flashes it in the oven to heat it up again, slice it and serve. So the guests have something to kind of munch on or nibble on as they arrive. And it's just a, a great way to have, um, to feed a lot of people quick without being slaving. So I can be there greeting people as well. Chef can be there greeting people without slaving over the stoves as they arrive. Great. Uh, what would your alternative be to mustard? Ketchup? No, joke. Uh, don't, no ketchup. Um, whew. Uh, olive oil, salt, pepper, as, uh, you know, as opposed to the grain mustard. But the mustard adds such a nice kick into this, you know, it's almost like a ham and cheese sandwich, hot, right? It's a really a nice, um, what would you add, Chef? Can you think of anything? Um, oh, horseradish? Maybe just like a shredded cheese and some more spice. Yeah, like some horseradish or something maybe, or I don't know. Yeah. Uh, that might work. Um, something, you know, just, I guess use your imagination. Like what, what flavors are you looking for? Because really there's no right or wrong answer um, with the stromboli. It's almost like a burrito, right? You can just stick stuff in there. And just throw it in there and call it your own. Beautiful. Um, egg wash rather than oil? Um, yeah, why not? I don't think you need an egg wash. I mean, um, I'd, I mean, I prefer oil, but I don't see why not. Right, Chef? Do you see anything? I mean, no. Uh, yeah, go for it. Go for it. I'm uh, not, yeah, it'd be a good flavor. Sure. When you have your steel in the oven, you have to cook on it. I tried reheating something the other day and the steel blocked the heat getting to the rack above. I had to use radiate oven instead of convection as it was wrapped in foil. Did you place it right on the steel or on the rack above the steel? Don't know the answer yet. Okay, let me know when you find that answer and we'll, we'll, take, yep. we'll take that one on. Uh, what about sauteing all the vegetables before? Yes, so that's a great idea. Um, same with pizza. If you're making like a roasted vegetable pizza, there's something, like when I worked at Figs, we used to cook everything first. Nothing would go on raw. Everything would be unique and have a, an abundance of flavor cooked before we put on the pizza. I've taken a different stance on that since we started baking steel for whatever reason. We were use, mostly using raw things and the idea and principle is it's gonna cook on, um, on the pizza or inside the stromboli in that five or 10 minutes it's baking. So, and, but however, like you're not gonna be able to replicate a caramelized onion in five minutes, right? Because those are a nice slow cook and over 40 minutes. Um, so maybe different items, you might wanna, you know, look at everything a little bit differently. So caramelized onions are awesome by themselves. However, those need to be cooked ahead of time. And we're gonna do, I think next week we talk about maybe doing a breakfast pizza. So maybe we cook our bacon first a little bit before it goes on top of the pizza. So I guess every ingredient might be different. What, what's your goal? What are you looking to accomplish? What kind of flavors are you looking for? Uh, and then just experiment. Sometimes try raw, sometimes try cooked and flavored. How do you uh, defrost and slack out frozen dough? How long? Oh, good question. Um, if it's in my deli, and today is Wednesday, and I'm making pizza tomorrow, I will take it out of the freezer a day in advance and put it into the refrigerator. Then I will do a proof on the counter about five hours before I bake my pizza or stretch the dough out. So it's a, a thaw overnight in the fridge, and then it's a, a longer than normal um, proof at room temperature because even though it's going to be thawed out at that point 
it still needs an extended time to kind of wake up. It's been frozen for a while. That seems to be the best um, practice for that. For my cameraman here, working, working it. How do you avoid raw stromboli in the center? Cook time. Um, we've got um, enough practice with this where we said, let's we bake it for 15 minutes and it seems to be perfect, a um, um, perfect amount of time. And then when we remove it, we kind of let it sit for a few minutes so it's still steaming, right? Um, in our case, a lot of times we end up cooking it ahead of time and then flashing it. And all that means is like blasting it under the broiler for maybe a minute after it's done cooked. Um, and that just gives it a little bit of color on top, but it's, um, it's awesome. Can I answer that? Yep. Uh, can you talk a little bit about vital wheat gluten and all-purpose flour? Ooh, yes. Good question. That's, that's one from the archives. Um, vital wheat gluten is a, a, a gluten like on steroids. And what we do is we take, I take, if I'm using all-purpose flour and I want to toughen up my dough a little bit, we take one tablespoon, about 16 grams, and add it into our, into our um, dough as we're making it. So it's one tablespoon per 500 grams of flour. That seems to do the trick. That seems to give it the gluten a little bit more um, elasticity when we're stretching our doughs out. And it also allows you to have an extended fermentation with all-purpose flour. And some all-purpose flours are okay without the white vinyl wheat gluten. It's just a nice thing, I guess, Practice, 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 practice. What kind of flour are you able to use? Make a 24 hour dough with it and see how you like it. Um, make, you know, make it for 48 hours, see how you like it. At 48 hours, it might find that it's creating some holes. It's not stretching as like you'd like. Then we would add the vital wheat gluten. But I wouldn't be adding vital wheat gluten until I have experience with the flour that I'm using. So it might take a couple of tries. That answer that question, I hope. Yes. Good. Um, have you ever tried burrata in lieu of mozzarella? Ooh, yes, I have, and it's awesome. Um, more so on pizza, and I don't think I've ever tried it in Stromboli. Um, I just like, I almost like it. Um, I, my wife likes it this way too. Is bake your pizza with like say tomato sauce and then add your burrata right when it comes out of the oven. So it's almost like room temperature, but slightly melted at that point. It just adds a really nice texture. I think burrata is pretty special for a cheese. Uh, and that seems to be a nice way to, um, to bake it or not bake it, place it on your pizza afterwards. But I know you can, you can bake it also. So anyway, again, be adventurous. Explore, see what happens. How are we on time? Yeah, we got about ten seconds left, and we're gonna take take a look at this thing. Um, let's see what we got. So that's been about fifteen minutes. We had the oven door open more often than usual, just because we were taking pictures of it. But let's take a peek and see what we have. I'll remove it just so you guys can see. That awesome. You guys want to see this too? Um, it's nice. It's got a little bit of color on top. It is um, hot, steamy. It's going to be totally done inside, no doubt. Um, see that? My seam here stayed together, so it really didn't bleed too much, which is nice. It was starting to fall apart. Um, which is great. So I think we did a pretty, pretty solid job. I wouldn't, rip, I wouldn't cut this open just for a couple of minutes still, but i um, pretty happy with that. I got a little light dough here, a little thinner here. But overall, awesome. Does anybody have any uh, more questions? I might boil this for a minute just to get some colors and then um, take some more pictures and then slice into it have for dinner. Can anybody visit us? For we need some taste testers.
Any more questions, you guys? Can you just reconfirm it's 250 grams of dough, not the flour, because there's some people asking about it's just half of the 500 gram dough recipe. Oh, that's a good question. It is 250 grams of dough. However, when I say 500 grams of flour, that's the size batch of flour I'm using for my pizza dough. But don't forget, there's 500 grams of flour there's in that recipe, and there's 350 grams of water, 16 grams of salt, and one gram of yeast. So you add all of those up, and you get 800, 867 grams total, okay, in my batch. And of that, I take 240 or 250 grams and make my dough. So just keep that in mind. It's not just, it's, so it's in other words, it's more than you think. Uh, do we have a New Haven, New Haven style dough recipe? If not, would we make one? Ooh, yes, yes. And I'm guessing we mean more of like a New York style. Like you're talking about Pepe's? Yeah. Um, yeah, we do, and we're gonna do it again. It's awesome. It's essentially a dough, and don't, this is our New York style, this isn't what Pepe's does. I, I haven't looked into exactly what they do. Um, but for New York style, we add a little bit of sweetener in there, like, um, like a little sugar or honey, I think in our case. And what else do we do to that? Less water, so it's not 70% hydrated. It might have 60% hydration, um, which makes it, it's not gonna blow up as much, it's not gonna get all those big air bubbles inside. It's a little bit more dense and really delicious. But we, we should do that, we could do that though soon. It's a great question. We should do it at Pepe's. Can you explain Vital Weak Gluten again? Um, so Vital Weak Gluten is a product. It's a, it's a gluten product that you add to Okay, I should back up a little bit. I've used Vital Wheat gluten maybe five times in the, and I've made thousands of batches of dough. I don't think it's really necessary. So now, with that said, if I, was, if I could only get my hands on all-purpose flour and I want to do an extended um, fermentation, I might use Vital Wheat gluten to help me do that. Don't think it's necessary but it is a product that's available to toughen up your dough. I hope that answers that. Uh, when could you add seasoning to your dough after rolling it out? Is this for pizza or stromboli? And by seasoning, do you mean like adding some oregano in there? Like on top of the, for the flavor? I think so. Okay, so I would take, I would add, um, I would add the oregano like on top of my sauce maybe. I mean, as far as seasonings go though, I don't really season my doughs or anything like that. Uh, Akasha, some rosemary at the end, I mean, you do that. If you're using fresh mozzarella, that you make at home, are you worried about the moisture content? Yep, and if my mozzarella is moist, but I've got a lot of liquid in there. I'm gonna kind of, like here's a piece of mozzarella here. We buy it, purposely buy it in these, um, this is Vermont, what is this called, Vermont? Um, Maple, Brook. Maple Brook Farm, I'm sorry, in Vermont. And we buy it in the plastic wrap. It's not in a brine that sits like in a, um, the liquid. So what you're talking about, if it is liquidy, when we take it out of there, what I do is um, take a, like a cheesecloth or a paper towel and just kind of squeeze that moisture out as much as you can. That really seems to help. Are you on broil right now? I might be, let's see. Nope, we're good. On bake. How much time do you need for a dough ball to proof direct from the fridge rather than the freezer? Still five hours? No. Um, different times of year, like right now it's really warm. Even with the air conditioning on, it's like 75 in here. So like I almost find like an hour to an hour and a half is what I'm looking for. If longer than that, it might be 
this dough might be exploding the lid off of this thing. So keep an eye. I like to ultimately time it so it's right at the level of the, of the lid and not going to pop it off. I don't like when it expands too much. So it'll work on that timing. But an hour, an hour and a half seems to be work, working. Anybody else? Um, do you take the lid off the container when you proof it at room temp? No, leave the lid on. Um, keep it airtight. If you do take the lid off, just cover it with plastic wrap. So just keep the lid on. It seems to be simpler. What size container is that? Uh, this is a two cup deli, 16 ounces. They sell these at like uh, Ziploc Glad, have um, the kind with the blue lid on it and the twist offs. They're great for home pizza makers. Sweet. Awesome, you guys. Great. That's it. Awesome. You guys rocked. Um, thank you. We're going to record this and um, put it back up on Facebook and YouTube later so you can kind of go back and ask any questions. If you have any comments, drop them below. Um, also, you guys, um, <clears throat> we made all the products on our baking steel today. Um, we would love it if you could help um, spread the word about the baking steel and how awesome it is. And what else, Jeff? Is that about it? We'll be doing these so. classes again next week. Um, so be on the lookout. If you have any special requests for classes, please let us know in the comments or email us and we'll answer those for you. All right. Thank you guys. Awesome. Awesome. We'll see you guys later.